If you have a dysregulated nerve system, we need to get you slowed down. We need to get you back in your body. There were some things inside you that you needed to feel. I think I was afraid to connect. I was very goal-oriented, very achievement-oriented, but it was as a tool to not feel. We're really good at numbing things, right? I'll have another glass of wine, I'll hit the THC, I'll hit the vape pen. Sex, like watching a crappy TV show. There are things that numb that voice inside you. You shared with me that you started the practice with $300 in the bank account. The $300, it's not an abundant place to come from. People thought I was crazy for doing this, but that's kind of how I built this community. How do you do things that expand your bandwidth, expand your perspective, expand your emotional regulation? I think that all comes from here. That's where the magic is. Keiko, welcome to Powerhouse Women. I'm so excited that you're here. Yes, oh, I'm thrilled. I mean, this I mean, is a long time coming, I think, right, for us? It's a, such a long time coming. I'm going to actually take us way back in a few minutes to, I was sharing with the team before you got here, just actually how perfect our relationship has unfolded because of the season I met you in and then the season that I'm in right now, where... Mm you have been such an instrumental part of my healing process. Hmm. And I struggle to tell people what it is that you actually do. Lindsay, you know, you know more than I know. Probably. I was like, um, if I were to describe it. Okay. So by profession, doctor hmm. of chiropractic. Yes. Healer, I would say that's how I would describe you. And then when people ask, well, okay, what's this place you've been going to that you rave about and has been such a big part of your healing process? I mean, sometimes I'll say, this is my nervous system chiropractor. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's one. And then sometimes I'll call it, it's like a tickle adjustment. <laughs> like oh. it's not a, you know, it's not a full crack kind of, <laughs> kind of chiropractic appointment. But I actually would love to start with having you describe when you are mm -hmm. asked, what is it that you do? We met on mm -hmm. an airplane, we met out and about, and someone says, well, tell me what you do. How do you describe it? You know, I feel like most people feel disconnected, dysregulated, lost. They don't feel like themselves, mm -hmm. right? And so they walk into our studio, and the first thing we want to do is hear their story. Mm -hmm. You know, where have you come from? You know, what's your story? How do you perceive the world? How do you perceive your body? Mm -hmm. Like, we have to establish that relationship first so that I can know where we need to go next. And then the second part is really about teaching and helping them remember where they came from, which is the story of conception. It's a story that has changed my life and how I see the world. And I think that's my piece of empowerment to women and men that come in. We've all been conceived, right? We're all here. So it's a story I take them back to and it's a remembering, right? Mm -hmm. We want to reinstill like this organic process that made you possible. And then we like to show them through touch. And that's usually where people are like, what are you doing? What's happening on the table? So the first thing, we want to help people land, right? If you have a dysregulated nerve system, we need to get you slowed down. We need to get you back in your body. You and I are in our heads right now. Yeah. Now, if I close my eyes, you and I can drop into our body. Right. But we don't spend enough time here. And so we feel disconnected because we're not regulated from the inside out. We're letting the outside world dictate how we feel. Mm -hmm. So when you land on the table, we wind down the nerve system, we calm it down, we get it into a parasympathetic state, which is the state we rest and digest in. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we can start to kind of unpack the tension patterns in the body. Mm -hmm. And there's something beautiful that happens in the adjustment. There's like a still point or a dropping in that happens. Yeah. Some people start crying. You know, the moment you touch them, you establish safety and you say, in a nonverbal way, it's okay to let go. Yeah. So I think what's really happening is we're just helping people reconnect to who they are mm. and to live from that centered place because it's not a place that we're consistently invited to be in. Mm. That's such a beautiful, even I'm, I'm feeling emotion come up as you describe that because that has been what this season has felt like for me. It's like a coming home mm. to myself. And I was telling the team, I just feel so grateful, first of all, like for our connection and the season that I first met you in was such a different season of my life. It was beautiful. And I was so unwilling. I think I was afraid to connect. I don't, mm. I didn't realize that's what was happening at the time, but I was very goal oriented, very achievement oriented, which 
is I think a natural part of me, but it was, it was as a tool to, to not feel. Yeah. And I remember just being very intrigued by you and your practice and had come in for a few sessions and felt relaxed, felt, you know, would have had left you a five-star review. But I (laughs) now look at why I felt so called back to actually receive from you now is that I've been ushered into this season to realize that I can keep going that way. That's Mm -hmm. an option. And a lot of people live that way. There's just another way Uh that's, I think, more true to me and how I'm actually supposed to operate in this world. But it's been a as much as it is a coming home, it's been almost like a relearning, remembering, actually, of what what is available. So to the maybe the high achiever, (laughs) maybe a couple of those listening to this. Hey. Right. Yeah. And I love that. I love that you also own that that is you. Mm. I would love for you to speak to that, to someone who probably doesn't even know how to admit right now that that's where they're at, but they're feeling this sense of, I keep driving forward toward these goals, but some, it just, this, it was like this sense that something was missing in the way I was operating or that there just was another way. Mm. Can you speak to that? Like what's really happening at that moment and how do we get that version of us to slow down? Well, I'll speak from experience. Mm -hmm. Like you say high achiever, you know, we're thrown into an educated world where we need to go to school. We need to be educated a certain way. We're just talking about this, the patterns of children, right? Mm -hmm. There's belief systems installed into us. So I think what happens is we get out of school and then we pick a living or we pick a purpose or some kind of thing that we want to make an occupation but then we never really fully connected back to here. And so we move through our life, just going through the days, going yeah. through the habits, repeating the same behaviors, having the same thoughts. And we just, we don't land. We don't come back in here and get still and really just listen to what's here. So mm. I think when people are like, you know, I'm overdoing everything and I cannot find a place to feel relaxed, we're doing too much. And we're just living from this space instead of coming into this space. Mm. And it's, it's addictive. The mind Mm -hmm. is addictive, like stimulating this. I love this. I mean, I'm able to have this conversation with you because I am educated and I have used the mental construct, but if you really want to connect to people and you really want to live a life on purpose centered from here, you have to learn how to turn this off and like bring it down a notch, Mm. turn down the volume and then turn up what you're feeling inside. It's more of a feeling place than a thinking place. Mm -hmm. So I'd almost urge people, you know, get out of your head and just drop into your heart, whatever that means. Yes. I've developed tons of techniques to do it. Yeah. And I think, like you said, you'll find your own journey. Like, I feel like you came back to this journey because you were ready to feel something. Yeah. You know, I don't want you laying on the table thinking about your body. I want you feeling feeling you, feeling the essence that moves through you Mm -hmm. that is, I mean, it's invisible, but you can't break it. It can't be broken, you know? Yeah. And if I even go back to, it was about a year ago that it was just like this intuition within me just to slow down a little bit. Hmm. Just said that it was okay to let go of some things that I was doing in the business, just things that I realized didn't feel like I was supposed to be doing them anymore. It was, and there were things that were great and there were things that were celebrated. And I just felt this intuition to slow down and just get quiet. And then a lot of emotion started coming up. Mm. Can you explain what's really happening there? Cause I, I I can see how for a previous version of me that would have been like, Oh no, yeah, (laughs) don't go there. (laughs) <laughs> but I think again, with this realization that I was being ushered into this season that was supposed to show me something, teach me something, I didn't just dive right in. It was a slow process, but I, I was, I was really surprised. Like a lot of emotion came up that clearly I hadn't been connected to. Mm-hmm. And it very much felt like I was going from my head and dropping into my body. And she just had a lot to tell me. Yeah. Can you explain what's actually happening? Like, what are our emotions trying to tell us? What I would say is this is introception. So most of our life, we are, we're tuning into our body, but we're really just going through the motions, Mm -hmm. right? We're just engaging with the world. You know, we're moving at a pretty fast pace. When you got quiet, like when the adrenaline stopped coursing through your system, you got quiet 
and there were some things inside you that you needed to feel, mm. right? And we're really good at numbing things, right? I'll have another glass of wine, right? I'll yeah. hit the THC, I'll hit the vape pen, right? Sex, like whatever it is, watching yep. a crappy TV show. Mm -hmm. There are things that numb that voice inside you. Mm. And I think when you finally got quiet, you were ready to hear the voice. Yeah. And it can be scary because the voice is going to say things to you. And you have to know, like, is this me? And what am I? What have I been before? Am I the mind? Am I the spiritual being? Like, what's my path? So I think it's interoception is being able to feel the inside. It's knowing the awareness of like the being and the spirit. Mm. And that's what happens in the adjustment. People drop in and they start feeling what's within them. Mm. And I think that's what that's where all the magic is. It was confronting at first, especially mm. as someone who my drug of choice was work and achievement. Mm. And there's a lot of validation that comes with that. And and most of it is good. Like I'm doing great work in the world. Mm. And it was I'm, I'm actually just picturing the graphic you drew for me on that piece of paper in my intake appointment of the wave and mm. just like how in order to expand this is the way i'm that mm. it, the experience has been for me and you can tell me scientifically if this is true you know i have all this drive within me i have these desires to live a life that means something and to impact mm. people and i I just kept feeling this desire to tap into the ability to experience more of the, let's just say like the high end of the emotions. I want to experience mm. more success, more, more of the high end of the emotions, but I was resisting going deeper into the emotions that just felt a little bit more uncomfortable, anger, maybe some grief, some sadness. And I felt as though now looking back, it felt like that, that was limiting me because what I feel like my experience of myself is right now is the more I've been able to access the depths of just holding space for myself and being able to hold more of the things I didn't want to feel before, there's actually more space to hold the things that I did want to feel. And I don't know if that actually relates at all to that graphic that you drew me of the wavy line, but mm -hmm. my experience of this season of healing has been finding more depth within myself. And I think, I suspect, because I'm still in the healing part of it, but I just think it's expanding me to be able to hold more of what I ultimately desire. Is that, is there any science to that? Well, I mean, define expansion. Yeah. What is expansion? Like I would actually say expansion is an energetic sense of who I am, mm -hmm. right? Like I can expand and get bigger. Like that's sure. physical expansion. Yeah. But expanding is like a, it's something you can't touch. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. So I think when you're going through, you know, the waves of life, there's there's peaks and valleys, there's turning points, there's highs and lows. Mm -hmm. It's all information going into the nerve system. Now you have a set bandwidth, a capacity that allows you to experience that life. Mm -hmm. So I can't take experiences away from you mm -hmm. and I definitely can't fix them for you. I didn't put them there. And I also didn't encode the experiences in your own body. I don't determine how that experience gets wired in your physiology. So I think helping people understand the expansion piece is a state of allowing. Yeah. It's a state of wholeness. And when you're whole, you can take in anger. You can process anger. You can breathe it in. You can, you know, punch the air, hit a pillow, throw something. You can process it. Mm -hmm. You can let it move through you fully. Mm -hmm. You know, grief is a huge one. We lose people in an instant does not mean we integrate them in an instant. We don't integrate that loss. So mm -hmm. it takes time. Mm -hmm but then we're expected to go to work the next day. Yeah. You know, so there's so much that's happening that's coming into the system that we're not processing. And it's because our bandwidth is small. So that state of expansion is how do you do things that expand your bandwidth, expand your perspective, expand your emotional regulation, expand your movement, the way you move, the way you show up to things. I think that all comes from here. Mm. And it's just this inner knowing that's, I think the work is like just yeah. being expansive, you know, yeah. and tapping into the feeling that gets you there. Yeah. That makes so much sense. And you're right. It's, I think I was talking about this on a, one of the episodes I recorded yesterday about how I think those external desires to experience more, to grow as, you know, these humans having, or this spiritual beings having a human experience, right, yeah. is that has all of those desires have just pushed me more into learning about myself, mm. deepening my 
spiritual practice, deepening my awareness of myself and my patterns. And, and then it's sort of like, yeah, like the external stuff comes and it's cool and it's, I can appreciate it, but it, it was the external or the expansion itself, the way of being that I was after without realizing that that's really what I was after in the first place. Yeah. That's such a beautiful way to describe that. But I, I actually would love if you take me back to, I know that your own healing process mm. was a big inspiration behind the work that you do. And I've never actually heard the story. Oh, so this is the perfect place to <laughs> hear it. Yeah. I feel like the first, I mean, it was my first adjustment with my mentor. Mm. And, you know, I think if you say the word chiropractic, what does everyone think? Mm -hmm. Cracking backs, right? Yep. They grab their neck and they go, oh my gosh, neck pain, cracks. Yeah. Like, and that's not at all what she portrays. Mm. So chiropractic, the purpose of chiropractic, the purpose of the adjustment is to unite man, woman, physical with man, woman, spiritual. Mm. It's about putting the, putting you back into the spiritual tone of the body. So my first adjustment, I remember I laid on the table and it's almost like, you know how some people just have an electricity in them? Yeah. She laid her hands on my back and it was like immediately I just relaxed. And again, I had a release just with touch alone. Mm -hmm. And she just had this mothering, nurturing touch about her. So she adjusted me from head to toe, spent some time with me. And then she gave me her impressions and she said stuff that I'm like, how could she possibly know that? And this I, is how I feel with you. Oh my God. So it makes sense. Yes. And it's just like, yeah. I want everyone to have that experience. Mm. Every spine tells a story. Every body has a message. And so the ability for her to be so present with me and to feel the things that I didn't even know I was feeling, mm. it just made me, I don't know. It's just, it unlocked something for me. Yeah. And I was like, I have to know more. I have to do this for the rest of my life. So that's really like the first time where I was like, wow. Wow. And how old were you at that point? So at chiropractic school, I was 22, 23. Yeah, probably 22. So what drew you to explore chiropractic as a profession if you hadn't experienced that version of it before? Um, I was lost when I got out of undergrad. <laughs> I mean, you go to yeah, pre-med yeah. and then it's like, no, four years is not enough. You got to go to yes. med school. So it's like, I took a year off and I was like, I can't do it. It's mm. too much. It's not what I really want. And so I was just looking for an alternative. And my dad actually happened to be dating a chiropractor who mm -hmm. I thought was crazy. I'm like, I don't know what she did. I never take the time. I was like, I want to be in cardio. I want to save lives. You know, like that was my mojo. And so I ended up working for her and you just, you saw people coming in and you saw people leaving and they were elated. They felt so good. They floated out the door. And I'm just like, what is she doing back there? And I worked for her for like months before I even got adjusted. Whoa. And then I finally got adjusted for her. And it wasn't the same as my mentor. Like, yeah. you know, she's yeah. pretty stereotypical chiropractic. Sure. But her energy and message was there. Mm. You know, she might have practiced in a different way. But that's kind of how I got led to go to school. And then I packed up my stuff, went to Dallas and just said, let's do it. Wow. Yeah. Because my entire perspective of chiropractic was before you was the the, the yeah. model that I think is more typical. Yes. Was, was that something you learned? So you said your mentor. So clearly mm. this chiropractic school was more holistic in at least what you were exposed to. You know, I, the school I went to, it was deeply grounded in the philosophical roots of mm. vitalism, how the body works, how biointelligence works. And that's what drew me in because I was like, they're speaking a language that I love yeah. and it makes sense to me. Like yeah. I feel it. Yeah. And so I got really excited about that. And school, you know, why do you go to school? Like they just want you to pass boards. Like you're yeah. paying to pass your boards, learn a bunch of techniques. Obviously yeah. you learn a ton about the body, but I don't feel like school and I don't think this is their job. It didn't help me cultivate a sense of like who I was and how to serve people through me, mm -hmm. you know, like that, that self-development wasn't there. Yeah. And that came through my mentorship. Mm -hmm. And we met every Wednesday night, we'd sit on a floor just like this, 20 students, and she would lock the door and she would commit you. She's like, if you show up tonight, you have to show up every Wednesday. And if you miss, do not come back. So it was a passage of right of just learning, you know, what are we doing in chiropractic? Yeah. What is the meaning of the adjustment? What is the meaning of life? You know, how are people living and how do we see life? Mm. 
And so it was a lot of philosophical conversation, but that's how I see the world. Yeah. I look at birth differently. I look at death differently. Uh, I look at highs and lows very differently because of that wisdom. Yeah. Okay. So how do you look at <laughs> birth and death mm. in the context of what you now know? Well, vitalism, most people know what holism is, right? Like obviously I don't. Oh, or if you okay, yeah. describe Let's it, describe maybe it. I know it, but I had never called yeah. it that. So <laughs> most people would look at the body as parts, like we're a machine, mm. right? I need a knee replacement. I'll get my knee replaced. But holism says, no, we're, we're very connected, right? Like my knee is related to my shoulder and the internal organs and the nerve system. Like I'm not just a piece of parts. I'm not a meat soup. Mm. So there is a holistic connection, but vitalism says, yes, we are whole but there's an intelligence that moves through that wholeness. And so when we adjust, we're working with the biointelligence of the body. Now, people are like, well, how are you touching biointelligence? How are you touching the nerve system? And I'm not physically touching the nerve system. This is the book I wanna write. It is touching the nerve system, but I'm touching it through fascia. And I'm using mm. touch to access the fascia in the body, which is a bioelectric crystal that's literally interwoven into all our cells. So it's kind of like the fabric of the being and the nerve system lives in the fascia mm. because it's bioelectric. So when I put my hands on you, there's an electric component and I can change things with you through the nerve system through touch. So it's just a really amazing thing to be part of. It's I'm just kind of lost in hearing you describe it and then mapping it onto my experience mm. of it because it feels as though it is tapping into an intelligence that was always there, but maybe it wasn't online or I wasn't online with it yet. Mm. So when someone is on the adjustment table, mm. I want you to speak maybe to the different things that the body is communicating to you. You, you said, mm. did you say like intentions? Is that what you said with your mentor was able to, because there are times you will say things to me that I, again, I have that experience of, mm. There's just really no way until I told you what I was going through that you could have known that mm. and things that are, I'll, I'll give an example because people might be like, what, what is it? I remember it was the session right after I had to have a brutally hard conversation to just a very honest, hard conversation with someone I really love that really essentially ended the, the way our relationship was. It was like a, a friendship that just it couldn't keep going the way that it, that it was. And I remember feeling so convicted that I had to just be honest and then allow mm. the relationship to evolve in whatever way it would on the other side of my honesty. And it was, it was just really hard. And I, I came in the next day and at the end you said to me, I'm like going to cry just thinking about it. You said, people will love you no matter what. Mm. And it, again, it was like, I didn't, how could you know that that was like what I needed? Cause it was just feeling like, but then why does this hurt so much? And, and I don't know, again, was it my shoulder that told you that? Was it my left ankle? In, and I, I think I'm curious about it. I'm just, I feel like this conversation is really for me to understand, to deep, more deeply understand yeah. the intelligence of my own body. Because I understand that you aren't necessarily tapping into anything that I don't have access to either. 100%. But how would you describe that? What is the body communicating to yeah. you? I think it's, you don't come out of school with this, right? Yeah. I came out of school adjusting from here. From your mind, yeah. But this type of adjusting, I mean, it's like a flow state back there. You know, yeah. we're not talking because you're not using this. So it's all feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And we can talk about like the bioenergetics of just, there's multiple people in the room. It's not just you mm -hmm. and I getting mm -hmm. adjusted. We're a collective, collectively healing together. Yeah. So when I put my hands, there's sometimes people will see colors, Sometimes people hear things. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, like there's just a message. And for you, it was just a message. Mm -hmm. And I know I need to say it when it hits me here. In your gut. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, you know what? People are going to love you no matter what. Yeah. It just, it came. Yeah. And sometimes there's times I don't say it and I realize I should have said it. Interesting. And so I'd rather just say yeah. it. And if it lands, yep. it lands. If not, you're probably just like, Great. Thank you. It's, it's always inspirational. It's always no, nice information. Exactly. You know? It's never like you, yeah. you suck. You should No, It's never anything like that. It, but there are times where I, I think that's the way that I would always think about it is, wow, there's clearly an, a wisdom, not even just to my physical body, but it's like mm. the energy that's being exchanged yeah. in an environment where there is so much intention. Yeah. And you mentioned how, so like specifically the practice you've built is one 
where people are healing in community. They're having this experience in community. So you developed the practice with your amazing wife, Sarah. You've grown this beautiful community. And I'd love if you'd speak to that, that element, because I feel, and I, again, I, we've never actually directly discussed this, but how much community is a part oh, of yeah. what you're actually healing people through. I, and I'd love to know the intention behind that. You know, well, that's, it's a practice that I learned from my mentors. Mm. And, you know, I remember the first time I saw that and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, this doesn't make any sense. Mm. But then when you experience it, you're like, oh, I kind of get it. Like, yeah. I can relax here. And I mean, we are all carrying stuff that we cannot fully carry alone, mm. period. Right. We need each other. You know, I need my friends. I need my family. I need these relationships and really community. <laughs> It's empowering to know that you have people in the room. I mean, sometimes people lay right next to their best friend and they don't even know it. You know, like there's such, it's a small community that's yeah. in kinfolk, but there are people that are all multi-connected. Mm. And it's so interesting because sometimes we'll have like all men back there. Wow. And it's just interesting to see the momentum and the shifting of energy through the day. Just who lands on the table Ooh, together. I bet that is such an interesting perspective. Oh, yeah. Such an and you know, you get to a point where you're in flow. You're not just yeah. adjusting one. You're not adjusting four people, right? You're adjusting one. Yeah. And, you know, my mentor used to say, like, some people will have the same pattern come to the surface and you will adjust it on one and then you will realize it gets released across the room. Yeah. And that is just energy, right? And that's just us all tuning into the biofield. You know, people have these amazing experiences with community mm -hmm. because everyone is holding an intention and everyone is accessing their still point, mm -hmm. which the still point is the point of full potential. And that's the place we can live from mm -hmm. and that's heal from. So, so powerful. Again, reflecting back on it, and I will see you at 9 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> I will be there to experience it. I've had this thought and sometimes I am in my head when I'm on the table. Oh. I've had this thought and I want to ask you now is, Knowing how, when you mention flow state, you can, you mm. can feel it when you walk in, you can feel it in you and in Sarah. And there's got to be days where that's just not your natural state waking up. Mm. What do you do or what do both of you do? Maybe it's even a co-regulation to, how do you have to ground yourself in yeah. order to be able to show up in that way? Because I've never, I've never experienced you in any other state than that flow state. Yeah. And knowing you're a human being who probably gets pissed off in traffic or Absolutely. on the way to the clinic. What's your practice for that? You know, it always goes back to the breath. Does it? You yeah. know, like the breath is, it's that life source too, you know? Yeah. So if we can tune into our breath and just get quiet and take mm -hmm. three breaths, you know, and really just focus on the exhale. You know, I do get triggered. People are like, you guys are always blissed out, happy, know. Like, peaceful. Like, tell me the last thing that you can remember, like this week that triggered you. I want to hear, like, give me the tea. You know what? This is perfect because it actually happened at Kinfolk. And here, here, one of my wounds came up, right? Mm. So we were in the back and Sarah had a little bit of a break. So she's up front. I'm adjusting. And I needed her back there because mm -hmm. we're a team back there, mm -hmm. you know, like, yes, you might not realize it, but we are like making sure the flow is just harmony. It's easy. We don't like a lot of resistance back there. Like we want to feel relaxed while we're yeah. adjusting you. Yeah. We can't be freaking out back there. <laughs> that yeah. would not feel good on your spine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and something happened where I just needed her and I didn't have time to go get her. So I was expecting her to come back. Mm. And this wound of just like, I feel like I don't have my teammate. Yeah. I feel like she's abandoned me. Yeah. And I mean, this is all in my head, right? And immediately it's like, I had to find your feet. Yeah. Just breathe, connect your heart. And you know what helps so much is just putting my hands on people mm. because it's like, we're all co-regulating. Mm. Like the person, the people who are adjusting back. there weren't feeling that. So it's just, I'm touching people, but people are touching me back. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's the beautiful thing with touch. Mm -hmm. It's, it's multi, it's reflective. Yeah. You know, and it's just that kinfolk to me is a regulation place. The moment I walk through the door, I love being there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's times I have back pain and I walk through that door and it's gone. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what's that about? You yeah. know, like that place is a healing place. Like it is. Sarah and I call it, it's like our little temple, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, that's, I think that's what attracts people too. Yeah. But I think breath is huge. Mm. Breath, presence, turning down the mind, getting out of the head and just getting into the body, you know? Uh, following your feet, just grounding yourself. 
choosing a grounding cord. Even just that simple practice, right? I love how you said, find your feet. It's mm -hmm. like dropping back into your physical presence and then the simplicity of the breath, but the power of it. I'm so grateful to know that you also <laughs> oh my have gosh. triggers and wounds. Not grateful. No, it's. I think it's just the reminder that you're human. There's never, there, that's not the goal to get to a point where you, where you don't have it. Yeah. Well, and what would life be without the peaks and valleys? Mm -hmm. You know, like enlightenment isn't something like you get there and you're just there. Yep. You get to feel it throughout your life. Like there just are moments that are huge inflection points where I'm like, that's what that feels like. Mm. Like it, it's a great place to visit. And, and unless you have contrast, you can't know what that is. Yeah. So. Yes. I'm so curious about the journey to building your practice. Mm. I'm in this cool space where I, I love to blend the spiritual with the strategic. I think that's just such a powerful way. That's how I love to build my business. And, and I know you, you shared with me that you started the practice with $300 in the bank account. Yeah. You've scaled this practice that is largely referral based. Is that right? All of Pretty it? Pretty much all referral based. And it, yeah. From the outside looking in, right? It looks very successful. It looks yeah. like it's thriving. And there's just, again, that feel of community. Mm. How has that process been for you as the human who's birthing this vision and along with Sarah? Like, what are some of the things that you think have contributed to mm. creating what you've grown it into today from that, you know, this very start with $300 in the bank account and a dream yeah. to, how many years later now? That's eight years. Wow. Yeah, eight years in practice. Yeah. You know, I think the $300 in the bank account was not a great place to start. Yeah. And, you know, you come out of school, you've got a quarter million dollars in debt. I was going to say, and not counting that starts, the student loan debt, right? Like, I was, I'm, you know, like, you're at a point where, you know, the homeless guy on the street is actually more wealthy because he doesn't have a quarter million dollars in debt. So, yeah, you could look at it that way. But I was like, no, I paid for this education and I don't regret it at all. You know, I paid off every penny. Like, I love that I was able to do that. Mm. But I think the three hundred dollars, it's not it's not an abundant place to come from yeah. financially. But I just I went to my dad and I was like, look, I've got three hundred dollars in the bank account. I want to open my own practice. And he's like, I will give you the eight hundred, which was my first month's rent. He's like, I will give you that. And it wasn't even about him giving the money. Yeah. It's he believed in me. Yeah. It wasn't the financial, but I was like, oh my God, he thinks I can do this. And so I took that money and I opened my doors and trust me, I saw two people, three people a week. Like mm -hmm. it was not like you open your doors and then everybody just they floods just in. They're like, oh, you're finally in the here, line. right? Yeah, there's no line. I had no grand opening. I had no marketing. You know, they don't teach you much in school about right. building a business. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was a tough moment. It was a grind for the first couple months. But, you know, I got really lean and mean. You know, I moved in with my dad. Mm. I was like humble pie, like we're going to be roommates. And I did that for a year. And that was good. That was the tension for me to, okay, I want to grow this. so I don't have to live with my dad anymore, which I love. Absolutely. But it's yeah. just, there are things that are going to be asked upon you. You're going to be stressed. You're going to have tension. Mm. You are a reflection of your practice and what you build. You know, I wasn't having a baby. I wasn't putting this into a baby, but I was pregnant with a mission and a vision. And I wanted to create this community. Yeah. And so we birthed it and mm -hmm. it has been, you know, every business has stages. Yeah. Much like human being goes through stages. Yeah. You know, if you look back five years, you were very different, mm -hmm. right? What you believed, what you assigned values to, like all of that can change. Mm -hmm. So I think the evolution of the business has just gone through a lot of different stages and I feel like we're at this point where like we love where we are, but again, the entrepreneur in you is like, well, what's the next stage? What's the next step? Yeah. You know? So I think, uh, it's just been an ongoing thing, mm. but I think communication and community have been the center of it. Mm. You know, I remember people thought I was crazy for doing this, but I landed on fifth Avenue, opened my practice and I knocked on every business owner's door and I just offered them a free session. And that's kind of the first circle of how I built this community. And then I just, I networked with everyone. I took people to coffee and I just wanted to know like who they were and what they did. Mm. And I just asked a lot of questions yeah. and I was curious and yeah, it, from the ground, it just built. Isn't it so fun to go down memory lane and oh, remember that like yeah. there's, there's a, and I, I really want those of you who are maybe in the starting phases and you really resonate with 
whether it's moving in with a parent or yeah. having to hold down a job while you're also building your dream. It's like the, yeah. there are just humble beginnings to each of our stories that very few people see. And it's, then you get further along and you realize what a special time that actually was. Yeah. It, it is. just is where all the character is built, all the resilience. Totally. All the adversity. I mean, all of it. it makes you who you are. And it's that not knowing piece. It's yeah. just trusting. Yeah. You know, like that was a huge component for me. You learn it intellectually. Like, oh yeah, yeah I'm going to trust the universe. But when you have that opportunity, you know, I mean, I had nothing left to lose but my mind and my <laughs> ego. Like, and the, who cares? Like, I'm just going <laughs> to lean into this wow. and show up and just be who I need to be for my people. Mm. And so, yeah, the not knowing is huge because I think a lot of people have that doubt and it's okay. Like you're going to have doubt, you know, I had doubt walking in the door. Like, I'm just like, I don't know what she's going to ask. <laughs> like, yeah. But that not yeah. knowing is like, well, there's something to discover here. Yes. Not knowing is a really abundant, fertile soil for well, what's going to be known. What's going to come out of this? So it's a, I'm like a, an entrepreneur will say this, like we love startup mode. Yeah. If you've done startup mode, you love startup mode because yeah. it's the birth. Like there's so much energy and tension. And then when you see it come to life, like Kinfolk is like its own organism. Yes. Like I'm still feeding it and giving it yes. energy, but like it lives, like it's an entity of its own. And, you know, I have to curate and cultivate it and keep feeding it. Yes. So, yeah, it's so magical. And I'm sure you've had the same experience building what you've built. It's I think especially when there's the community element to it, you really do see it take on a life of yeah. its own. Mm. So what is next? What are what are some of the dreams that you and Sarah yeah. talk about for whether it's the practice or just for your own impact? Yeah. And who you individually and, you know, together as partners are here on this planet to evolve into. You know, our dream has always been to have kin folks in every major city. Mm, like, please, because yes. when I try, I asked you, there I was like, go. I'm spending some time in California. Yeah. Do you have anyone? That'll be the biggest question I get after this episode is yeah. I don't live in Arizona. I know. Where I can know. I go? And that's the thing is there is a community of people that do practice a very similar way. But I mean, it's 2%. You know, it's, mm. it's not a lot of people. We're not scattered everywhere like the joint. So I want us to be like the spiritual vitalistic joint. And I want kinfolk to be that kind of hub yeah. in every major city. So what we're working on currently is about, okay, I can't be in every city. Yeah. So how do we get people to understand how to build a practice in this way and mm -hmm. how to adjust this way? You know, so it's more of a, we're leaning more towards a training program. Like yeah. how do we get more people to learn what we do? And then not just scaling what I do, but scaling the message of mm -hmm. why we do what we do. So I think our voices are going to have to, I mean, this is perfect, right? You yeah. get to use your voice, you get to scale your message and what you have to teach and what you want to share with people. So that's going to be asked of us. Sarah mm -hmm. is actually writing a book. I uh, saw that on the website. Oh, I was going to ask yes, about it. Yes. Oh, she has it on the website. Yeah. Yes. Um, she finds out in October who picks it up. Okay. So that's soon. Yeah. Very soon. So we'll see. I mean, it's going to be a fantastic book and it's just it's everything that we, I mean, it's how we see the world too. So it's going to speak to all those questions that you just okay, asked. Well, she'll you. have to come on the podcast. She will have when to it, come on the podcast. She will when blow it your mind with, comes out. with everything of conception and embryology. Yeah. yeah. Is that what it's about? Uh, yes. I'm trying to think if I can, I'm allowed to <laughs> no. say. Okay. Yes, I think so. Yes. We'll just, we'll just go with coming soon. It's to a yeah, bookstore near you. It's a book that will bring you home. Oh. That's how, I, I mean, I've read the proposal and whatnot and I know what it's about. I mean, yeah. this is what we talk about over yeah. dinner all night. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I do know what it's about, but that's the feeling that I get when I mm. read it. Um, so I think it'll be very great for people. That's so beautiful. Yeah. When you look back on the journey of building kinfolk, mm. what's the thing you are most proud of? The people, the community. Mm. I mean... I'm so grateful and so blessed to be surrounded by the people that have come through that door. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, who am I to get to adjust you? Who am I to get to adjust you? You're you know, so glad just, that you are the but person to adjust. But it's humbling. It's yeah, so humbling that, that you entrust me to work with your divine being. Mm. I mean, it's just such a gift. So mm. I'm humbled every day by it. And, you know, I look at the schedule and it's just like, just angels on my schedule, you know, and I could be having a bad day, mm -hmm. but it's like, once I get to kinfolk and once I'm like in that energy, like all this goes mm -hmm. and I can just be so here. And it's just, that's the gift is mm -hmm. I just get to show up and like 
adjust from my heart and just live from my heart for majority of my day. Like it's a beautiful way to live. Yeah. So gosh, when you put it into those words, I think I take a look then, and I hope everyone listening is hearing this too, of just that perspective for the work that all of us are doing. Right. Yeah. It changes it. It does. It changes the moments where the thing happened and you're triggered and the, the wound Mm -hmm. comes up, but then you, and, and that's the same for me. It's like when I get to sit and have these conversations or when I get to pour into community or whatever that looks like, yeah, it just all melts away. It yeah. does. Because you become so present with yeah. what's here. Yep. I'm not worried about what happened yesterday. I'm not worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. Like mm-hmm. being here, like you and I fully being here mm-hmm. is priceless. Mm-hmm. And I love that you do these in person because that's what it is about. Yeah. It's about sharing our presence with each other. Yeah. So, uh, well, for people who are wondering where hmm. to connect or just stay, even just stay connected so that when the vision becomes reality and there's kinfolk in their city, they can find out about it. But then even just for those who are want to come to Arizona yeah. and experience it or are local, hmm. where's the best place for people to connect with your mission, to book appointments? I think you even mentioned having a just a really generous offer for oh for sure for yeah. people who want to mention that they found out through powerhouse women which is so generous I'm yes like, with or without it just please everyone give yourself the gift of experiencing yeah. it um so you can find us at kinfolkoptimalliving.com we're also yeah. on instagram kinfolk optimal living and yeah we would love to just you know host people coming in you know we'll put a discount on your first visit let you experience it and hopefully it resonates with you yeah yeah uh it's It really has been the biggest gift to Hmm. my current season of, like I said, coming home to myself. Yeah. I think it's, it's helped me to find my way back into my body as someone who loves to live in her mind. And I love my mind. Yeah. It's a great, it's, it's actually quite a nice place to be, but just feeling so much more in my own physical being has also been, I, I, I don't know that anyone else would say it this way or even experiences me differently, but I've, I just feel so much more me. That's so good. Like you feel like yourself. Yeah. Right. And why? Like what allows you to feel like you? Because you've always been you, Mm -hmm. right? Like you've done the work, you've stripped away the patterns and the labels and you know how to find yourself again. Mm. So don't forget that. Do not forget Mm -hmm. that feeling. Mm. Cause you can tap into it anytime. Mm. It's so, it's just the most, when I think about like what powerhouse women, like as a, as a brand means, I hired this branding company who did, we have our fancy new, new logo on these little mic holders. And we really dissected just what that word means to, to me as the vessel who's in charge of this you know, this vision and and really what it means for the community. And it was the first, we kind of dissected this word powerhouse into, you know, the two root words, power being, you know, that is where our power lies. It's coming Mm. home to ourselves. It's realizing that that is like the Dorothy moment, right? It's always, we've always had it. We just had to come home to it. And then house being like, if you think of what a home environment is, it's safety. It's like that true safety to be Mm. yourself combined with community Mm. is you know, it, it's the same thing. It's just another iteration of exactly what you are creating in your own unique way. Yeah. And to realize that's where that actually is where our greatest power is. It was oh, never yeah. outside of this physical Welcome meat home. suit. Welcome home, right? <laughs> so I'd love to ask this question to, to wrap up. It's, it's hmm. just a beautiful opportunity, I think, for all of us who are high achievers to pause and really just acknowledge yeah. something that we've done that's that's just great and it can be I always invite like the first thing that comes to mind it's we just call it a powerhouse moment but it could be something so small and insignificant that you're like you know what I didn't pause and acknowledge the way that I handled that or the way that I overcame mm-hmm. that just the first thing that comes to mind that you want to publicly right now celebrate yourself for you know, I'm just going to go with what came to me first. Yeah, I always love to hear just the first that comes to I mind. Mean, this is like a cliffhanger, but it was coming out. Yeah. Like that took so much courage. Mm. And I, I can even feel like the visceral feeling going back to that moment. And wow. uh, that was my power moment. Because as soon as it was out, mm. I was like 
It's like you're free, you know? And that's what you speak to. This whole powerhouse is, it is about coming home and it's about tapping into what we already have, you know? And I want my nurse system living in the house, the house of power, right? Yes. So it was that moment and it was just, mm. it's a liberating moment. And I think everyone has a coming out story, sure. right? It doesn't yeah. have to be about sexuality. Yeah. Like it could be, you know, who you want to be and, you know, a football player. Like you just want to come out as an athlete, like whatever it might be, yes. like find out what story is inside you that mm. needs to liberate and set you free. And then remember that feeling mm. and live from that place. It's like actually just stepping into full authenticity. Yeah. Whatever that is for us. Yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you thank for you. this time. Oh my gosh, thank you. I cannot wait for part two and part three and part four <laughs> and and just to continue to be a part of your world and your community because it's impacted me so profoundly, which in turn impacts my community and mm -hmm. the ripple effect that we get to have here. Yeah. And I just really want you to know how special that has been. Well, you've been very special in my life too. So thank you for coming back. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for bringing me home. Oh, anytime. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.